The sands of time work against us. They work at their own pace with their only goal the construction, destruction, and recycling of all matter. Those craggly, sharpened, curved bones of the dinosaurs returned to the earth from whence they came. Along the way, they became torn apart beyond recognition. This is what makes the study of their remains so intriguing and why so many of us strive to understand them. It is too bad that things like claws may be the only thing the sands decide to keep as a time capsule. A single piece of evidence that an entire species of animal ever graced the surface of the planet, ever spent its life looking for food, hunting, loving, mating, sleeping, fighting, or playing. This is their story, and we have a responsibility to tell it. When it comes to the theropod dinosaurs, there is a lot we do know. These usually bipedal, usually carnivorous dinosaurs were some of the earliest ones to ever evolve. They thrived as the apex predators of many Mesozoic ecosystems and even took to the skies as birds. Despite how much we know about these charismatic reptiles, there are a handful of groups which remain mysterious. As more fossils are found of these groups, more is found out about them, even if those finds are jumbles of bones from the spinal column, feet, or legs. One of these mysterious groups is the Megaraptors. In science, Latin and Greek roots are used to classify all living things using what is called binomial nomenclature. This essentially means that the names given to every living and extinct thing are largely arbitrary and used just for classification and bookkeeping. Therefore, though something may have the root saurus in its name, that does not inherently mean the animal belongs to any one group. Saurus is a derivative of the word soros, meaning lizard, snake, or reptile. Consequently, there are plenty of animals whose genus name ends or begins in the root raptor, which is derived from a root word for thief or Caesar. Birds of prey today are commonly called raptors but aren't evolutionarily linked with one another. Many dromaeosaurs, the raptor dinosaurs, have been given the end root of raptor, as have many of the short-skulled oviraptorosaurs and many more non-dromaeosaur dinosaurs. This brings us back to the subject of the video, the Megaraptors. Despite their name, they have little to no connection to the dromaeosaurs or raptor dinosaurs. I mean, just look at the two. The Megaraptors have their giant claws on their hands and are much larger. Despite the diatribe I just went on, the very first Megaraptor, Megaraptor itself, was originally thought to be a dromaeosaur theropod. <laughs> That's right, it was named with the same conventions used to name many dromaeosaurs. The giant hand claw was interpreted as a giant toe claw, and the image of a massive 30-foot dromaeosaur was born. A few decades later, and not only were more fossils of Megaraptor itself found, but more Megaraptor and dinosaurs were found too. What little has been found of each one tells us that these animals were quite distinct from the dromaeosaurs, a group, I might add, that eventually gave rise to birds. The Megaraptors, or more scientifically, the Megaraptorans, were a group of large, allosaurish, tyrannosaurish theropods which seem to have first appeared in the early Cretaceous. They are characterized by a long, arrow-shaped skull, short, recurved teeth, enormous arms ending in huge hands and long, sickle-shaped claws on the first two fingies, as well as an unusually airy skeleton from the skull to the backbone to the tail. They are known from Asia, Australia, and South America. Thanks entirely to how fragmentary most of the known specimens are, and partially to their scattered distribution in space and time, they remain a sort of mystery group. Like I said before, the first one found was thought to be a Dromaeosaurian. After more remains were found, that shifted to an Allosauroid identification. That shifted between Allosauroid and Carcharodontosaurid through the years. A new hypothesis was borne out in the last 10 or so years that perhaps these critters were actually a weird offshoot of the Solorosauria group, perhaps even specifically the Tyrannosauroids. This more recent identification has seen a good bit of back and forth between the experts, but there does seem to be more evidence in favor of a Solorosaurian identification to the group rather than an Allosauroid one. 
the evidence being phylogenetic analyses, of course. You've got the Asian Fuviang Venator, Veyu Raptor, and Fukui Raptor, then the Australian Australovenator and Rapator, and finally the South American Anani Raptor, Murus Raptor, Erosteon, Tratagenia, Orca Raptor, and Megaraptor. This small but steadily increasing group of beasts has just gained a new member in a March 2022 paper published in Nature by Alexis Aranciago, Rolando, Matias Mota, Federico Agnolin, Makoto Manabe, Takanobu Tsuhiji, and Fernando Novas. Back in 2019, Alexis Rolando and team uncovered the remains of a large megaraptorid from a dig site eponymously named the Megaraptorid Site at La Anita Farm, which is about 30 kilometers southwest of El Calafate City in Santa Cruz Province, Argentina. The remains of this large megaraptorid individual were found in the Chorio Formation, which dates to the Maastrichtian stage of the late Cretaceous Epoch, making the beast about 72 to 66 million years old. Once the remains were fully prepared in the field for transport, taken back to the Museo Padre Molina in Santa Cruz, and further prepared, the specimen was shown to include a bunch of vertebrae from the neck, back, and tail, chunks of the shoulders, a bunch of ribs from the neck and torso, and some belly ribs, or gastralia. Before the most recent description, some of the bones were described as an indeterminate megaraptorid by a huge author team led by Fernando Novas back in 2019. Those bones were too few and contained too few characteristics to determine the animal down to a genus or species level until now. The new team has officially christened the bones Maip Macrothorax. Maip is the name of an evil entity from Ionic Gank mythology. This being represents the shadow of the death that kills with cold wind, which roams the Andes Mountains. Jesus. Us Americans have to try too hard to make our dino names sound cool and edgy, and hear the Argentinians and Aonikang people trounce us in badassery. But that's neither here nor there. The species name, on the other hand, is your generic Latin root plus Latin root. Macro means big, and thorax means thorax. So like, big thorax, because the critter was super barrel chested. Shunker had a thoracic diameter of like a whole 1.2 meters, a whole goddamn 4 feet. That's big enough to fit like two whole children in there. Oddly enough, a characteristic of tyrannosaurs and not allosauroids. Just saying. Though there is a good chunk of the skeleton here, there is still a lot missing. Most of the parts that are missing are the parts that would give us a good idea of what it was eating and how it got that food. Megaraptorans are known for huge arms and large hands with meat hook style hand talons, and by known I mean every single one. They also tend to have moderate length necks and pointy allosaurish shaped skulls. It would be unlikely for this one to venture so dramatically from the group as to have completely different anatomy in the arms and head, uh, but you never know. We won't know for sure till more specimens that can be verifiably referred to Maip are found. A thing that is unusual here in Maip's skeleton is what is called costovertebral ligaments. Many of the ribs and backbones preserved striations and or rugosities on certain parts of the bones. These striations are present on the parts of the bones where ligaments would attach to. Just so happens that rugosities and striations on bone usually indicates that something was attached there. These sections of the bone are also where costrovertebral and costrotransversarium ligaments are. These are the things that attach one bone to another. The striations are not commonly preserved in the bones of other theropods, so their presence here in Maip offers a great opportunity to better understand them and how they were integrated into the skeleton. According to the paper, the striations seen in the Maip bones are most similar to the striations seen in Tyrannosaurid bones. The striations are present here, the tips of the parts of the vertebrae called the transverse processes. These patches have been interpreted by the authors to be where the costrotransversarium ligament attached. This special stretchy ligament locked the spines coming off the vertebrae to this part of the rib. This provided connection, but also a shock absorber to the bones as the animal moved. 
As these ligaments are holding up a ton of weight, they leave behind rather large marks in the bone. When the ribs are aligned with the vertebrae, the striations align perfectly and in an oblique orientation. The authors suggest that this orientation may have helped the animal in breathing. These animals used their ribs to help them inhale and exhale air, so they needed to be able to move with the body as it breathed. Maip is the youngest and most complete Megaraptoran known from Patagonia. There are some minor, fragmentary remains of Megaraptorans known from the same rock as Maip and from the underlying rock, but they're literally just a few teeth and a single vertebral centrum. Most other Patagonian Megaraptorans are known from a later time, the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous Epoch, 83 to 72 million years ago. What sets Maip apart from these other Megaraptorans, and most Megaraptorans in general, is its massive size. Though the remains are fragmentary, enough is known to get a good general estimate of the individual's size at the time of death. Based on its relatives and using some math formulas, the team have estimated the animal may have stretched 9 to 10 meters, 30 to 33 feet in length. This would make it the largest known Megaraptor. This lines up with what little is known about the evolution of these animals. They seemed to have been getting bigger in size following the extinction of the shark-toothed dinosaurs, the Carcharodontosaurids, at the end of the Cretaceous. The absence of the mega-predators may have opened up the size niche for megaraptors to take over. At nearly the size of the largest known allosaurs, Maip would have been an absolute powerhouse when it needed to be. The claws of Megaraptorans, like Megaraptor, were up to 11 inches 30 centimeters in length. The larger size of Maip may suggest it carried around a set of even larger claws. Exactly how large is complete speculation, but if only a head is found, the teeth might help make that speculation a little less, well, uh, speculative. When all the skeletal characters were tallied up and put into the phylogenetic analyses, a good estimate of its evolutionary tree were made. Their analyses found that Maip helped elucidate a splitting up of the Megaraptoridae family into two groups, tentatively named Clades A and B. Clade A is the more inclusive group, containing all Megaraptorids except for the Japanese Fukuiraptor and Australian Australovenator. Clade B is the more exclusive group, containing everyone else, all of the giant South American Megaraptorids, so Aerostion, Tratagenia, Orcoraptor, Murasraptor, Megaraptor, and now Maip. Maip was found to be most closely related to Aerostion and Tratagenia. The team's analyses also found that the entire Megaraptor group nested within the Salorosauria group, providing further support for this hypothesis. This is making it increasingly likely that these silly bastards really were not at all related to the similarly pointy-snooted allosaurs. Funny how the Salurosauria produced a group of some of the shortest-armed carnivorous theropods, the Tyrannosaurs, as well as the longest-armed ones, the Megaraptors. An interesting thing to note is that the two-fingered, notoriously unplaceable Gualicho is found to be right outside of the Tyrannosauridae group in most of the team's analyses. Whatever this means remains to be seen, but could have some really wacky implications. Tyrannosauroids are completely unknown from South America throughout the Jurassic or Cretaceous. To find out that one had split off from the Tyrannosaurid tree and somehow made it to South America would truly be a mind-bender. Maip comes from the Chorillo Formation. This chunk of rock is made up of fine-grained sediments, super fine stuff like mud and silt. These sediments were laid down in a lowland area carved to spaghetti by all sorts of streams and rivers, a fluvial environment. This basin provided a lush area for all sorts of plants and animals to thrive. Maip lived here, but it was joined by a huge cast of supporting ecological characters. The smallest of these characters were the ever-present army of frogs, fish, mammals, snakes, turtles, lizards, snails, mussels, clams, and insects. Along with them were freshwater mosasaurs, the marine sea lizards with shark tails and whale fins. 
crocodiliforms were present as well. The ornithopod, Isasi cursor, trounced around staying away from the bigger, noisier animals while chowing down on ferns, bark, or insects. Nulla Titan was the largest thing here. Though only known from some vertebrae and leg bones, it was clearly an absolute unit capable of squashing just about anything it encountered. Fragments of the rest of the ecosystem tell the story of ankylosaurs, hadrosaurs, noosaurs, and unenlagiids. Ankylosaurs here may have been more like the little stegoros described not too long ago, while hadrosaurs may have been similar to the big-nosed critosaurs of the north. Unenlagiids were a group of pointy-snouted fish-eating raptors, with some getting to the size of small spinosaurs. This was the new normal of late Cretaceous South America after it saw the decline of the Carcharodontosaurids. Just as the giant eagle-handed megaraptors were reaching their largest sizes and taking the biggest ecological roles, they were wiped out along with the rest of the saurians. Like how many speculative evolution historians write that tyrannosaurs may have continued on their hypothetical trajectory of bigger heads, more teeth, and weedier arms, the megaraptors may have enjoyed a similar continued hypothetical surge in new forms with further development of their brawny death instruments had that giant space ball rock not crashed the party. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubbinger, Biotaverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.